Today I'm going to show you how to use Audacity to create some really good high quality dry audio voice recordings. So this tutorial what we'll do is we'll cover the basics of getting started and then we'll lead into some of my more advanced post-processing techniques. Uh, those videos are linked in the description and we're not going to really dig into them in this session but they are linked down below so when we're done with this session um, I would encourage you if you want to learn more to go down and check those out. So okay when uh, we open up Audacity here we're going to break this up into chunks. The first one will be setting up your mic options like playback and your recording settings and then next we'll do a sample recording and then lastly what we'll do is we'll show you how to do some very basic post-processing effects including things like normalizing noise removal and I'll show you some super quick ways to set your EQ settings to color your treble and your bass response. We won't get into full equalization and all the post-processing stuff, but we'll uh, touch that in another video. So my channel has additional videos on how to create effects chains and more customized equalizations like I was just talking about. But in this les lesson, I want to show you how to get some great results quickly and easily. And from there, you'll be ready to learn how to use these safe, uh, saved post-processing templates, if you will, to speed up your workflow. So, okay, here we have Audacity open, so let's set up your recording settings. There are more than one way to do this, but I'd like you to go to Audacity at the very top and choose Preferences, where we'll touch everything in this one setup box. So under Playback, you would choose your built-in output if you're using, say, your computer speakers. I've got speakers that are routed through an audio interface box, so I'm going to choose the Scarlett 2i2 option. And then for a recording device, choose the microphone that you've got plugged into the USB port of your computer. So I plug the Scarlett, US, uh, Scarlett into my USB port, and then my microphones go into the Scarlett. So I'm going to choose that option. So everything gets routed through that box. And um, for channels, you'll want to choose single track mono. Okay, so leave the playback defaults, and for recording, leave the defaults that you see here. For quality, I prefer 48,000 hertz with a 24-bit format. You can choose 44,000 and 16-bit, and it'll be just fine. You, all you're going to get is smaller file sizes, but with the microphone I use and the audio interface ability to capture more detailed sound, I like to use the 4824. So... Um, Leave samples here to best quality, as you see it here, and we should be all set. Leave the rest of the menus down below here, guys, as they are. You're not going to need to worry about any of those. We just covered the main four. And those big four can also be found right here on the top navigation panel if you want to change it, right here. Very simple to do. Now, on the right, I want you to notice that you'll see a speaker and a microphone icon. The speaker slider is your output level of your speakers. And the mic slider is your input level for your recording you're about to do. Now over here in the middle, you've got meters that show you a visual level for both of these. Under the mic dropdown, I want you to select Enable Meter and Start Monitoring. Now you can see your mic levels visually before you hit Record. So speak into your microphone and see where your level falls you'll want to peak somewhere between minus 6 and minus 12 dB. Um, let me make this really clear. You want to stay away from zero. The number zero is your enemy in audio. Once you hit zero, you've clipped and you've distorted your audio and there's no post effect that can bring it back. I've seen so many people do tutorials of things where the first thing they do is clip their audio and then they show you all the things you can do. Well, once you've ruined it, you've ruined it. So make sure to go between minus 6 and minus 12. Give yourself some good room. And you won't distort your audio if you see your level a bit lower to start with. If you notice that it's too high, or if it's too low, say around minus 18 to minus 24, just simply increase or decrease the level on the slider on the right-hand side. And once you have it set, choose Stop Monitoring. And once you've selected Stop Monitoring, you're now ready to record. And that's all there is to set up. Now it's time to record using the red button that you see right here. Once you've finished, hit the yellow square button to stop the recording. Okay, so you should see waveforms now that are not super small, 
but don't reach all the way to the top of the meter. If your audio waveform reaches the very top and hits or exceeds this 1.0, you need to reduce your gain slider in the setup because your setting is too high and your audio is going to be distorted. You can see mine are somewhere in between. See, this, this we can work with. That's a good thing. We want it to be somewhere in between. The first thing we want to do now is take out any breaths or background noises between the good stuff. And you can see those little artifacts right here. A super tiny little bit of artifact is okay, and I'll tell you why. If you eliminate all noise, 100%, your risk, uh, you're risking your audio is going to sound awkward from loud and clear to dead silent. So it's going to go from good audio to dead silent, and then your voice, and then dead silent, which in the final output, guys, it's going to sound very unnatural. So having a very, very tiny bit of noise is not bad. Too much is not good. So let me show you the process for making just a small change to remove noises. I want you to go to Effect Noise Removal, click Get Noise Profile, and now using your mouse, highlight a bad piece only. Now hit Control or Command A if you're on a Mac or a PC to select the whole clip. Go back to Effect, Noise Removal, and reduce by about minus 12 dB. If you go a lot higher than minus 12, you're going to take away all the good parts with the bad, and your audio will sound like you're talking inside of a tin can, and that's not good. You want to leave the rest of the settings as you see here, and simply click OK. Now let's go to Effect Normalize, and we're going to choose minus 1 dB and hit OK. Notice how our waveform jumped and increased the loudest part to minus 1 dB. But I'm going to show you now a cool trick. When you normalize to minus 1 dB, it doesn't make the whole audio track sound louder. It can still have highs and lows that you don't desire. And you can use what's called compression to fix this, but we'll get into that another time. Let me show you a quick down and dirty trick that works wonders before you learn about applying compression to your audio. I want you to go to the minus magnifying glass icon and click it several times until your whole recording can be seen in one small condensed chunk like this. Now look and see where you may have a chunk of audio that falls say well below the rest, in effect far below minus one. I want you to highlight it with your mouse and hit Control R or go back up to the effect and select repeat normalize at the very top. This will increase just that section back to negative one again. So what you want is a waveform that has nice peaks above and below the zero line, nice and tall. This means your audio has good dynamic range. That's a good thing. So the waveform above zero is your treble and the waveform below is your bass. So if you've got something that's going from very low to very high, that means you've got excellent range, and that audio is going to sound great because it's got highs, lows, and everything in between, and that's good stuff. So the last quick thing I'll do is I go to Effect, Bass, and Treble, and I'm going to show you a real quick EQ process here. Here you can raise and lower the bass sound or the higher sounds, and just simply click Preview to get the sound you desire. So, for example, I have a deep voice, and if I use a microphone close-up like I do here, I need to kind of drop the bass by about 12, minus 12 dB to get just the right sound. And I will tell you guys, this part is way more art than it is science. You just really have to listen to it to get it right. And then when I'm done, I usually, the last thing I'll do is normalize back up to minus one, one last time, and then just listen to your audio. And that's it, guys. Great job. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time.